welcome to the video lecture of biology chapter 6 that is life process in this chapter you will get the basic concept of different types of life processes occurring in living organism though it is very difficult to define life and living beings but we can say that life is cell based self regulated complex system of molecules where chemical reaction are going on all the time now what are the different characteristics of a living things or what are the various characteristics of life as you can see on the slide there are seven basic characteristics of life which are given by the acronym mrs green they are movement metabolism respiration sensitivity growth reproduction excretion and nutrition now the most and the important of these characteristics of movement which is of two types it is visible that is change in position or any of the body parts and it can be invisible that can occur at level of molecules both these visible and invisible movement are the deciding factor whether something is alive or not thus we can say the most important criteria to decide whether something is alive is movement now next we will be dealing with the definition of life process here you can see life processes are those activities and functions of living beings which are essential for maintenance and survival of life on this earth so these are all the basic functions which are similar in all organism so we can say that life process occurs in both unicellular and multicellular life forms now we see how these life processes are interrelated to each other first you see nutrition so nutrition how we obtain food next is respiration where every living beings requires energy for working out the body machinery so for that most of the organism uses uh, oxygen and for this the process is known as respiration then that oxygen has to be transported to each and every cell so therefore a mechanism of transportation is found which bring brings the all the nutrients and other material required by the cells then there is excretion that is a number of waste products are formed as a by product of any of the metabolic activities and they have to be removed from the body so the process of the removal of waste product from the body is known as the excretion now the means of transportation of the material and the oxygen in unicellular and multicellular organisms are different how we will see in unicellular organism there is no specific cellular organelles or any specific functions uh, performed by any a single cell but in multicellular organism we see there are clear cut division of labor that means mitochondria or cytoplasm or golgi bodies are specialized in their specific function but in unicellular there is a single cell which is always in contact with the outside environment okay so there is no uh, division of flavor because there is no specific uh, cell organelles and the outer surface which is in contact with the environment what is it does thus a simple mechanism of transportation is required which is diffusion a simple mechanism but it can't be the only means of transportation okay for the oxygen or the materials in multicellular there can be any other specialized mechanism for the transportation of the material from one cell to another why because as the complexity increases the metabolic activity also increases and hence all the multicellular organism have specialized exchange system hence we can say that diffusion is a successful process of obtaining oxygen by unicellular organism like amoeba however it cannot meet the requirement of multicellular organism because in them every cell is not exposed to oxygen containing environment okay and in order to pass from one part of the body to the other part of the body diffusion by the diffusion it has to cross to whole of the billions of cells and it is estimated that in multicellular it will take long long 
time that means it can take three years for the oxygen to reach from the from the head to the toe only through diffusion hence it is a very important question that why diffusion is insufficient to meet the oxygen requirement therefore in multicellular organism they have a specialized transport system which takes oxygen to the surroundings of the individual cells within a span of some minutes now next we will be dealing with the nutrition okay this how we obtain food how the process of intake of nutrients and its utilization because energy is needed to maintain a state of order in our body and that energy we get from food we eat it is a general requirement for energy and the material which is common in all the organism so let's take up the nutrition definition it is written here it is a process of intake of nutrients and utilizing it to provide energy for, for performing various metabolic activities of organism a process we can also say a process of obtaining and utilization of food for meeting various requirements of living beings now what are the nutrients nutrients are different components we can say they are the different components of food with various functions okay now this nut nutrition derived from the word nutri which means to nourish hence we can say that it is a process of obtaining and utilization of food for meeting any of the requirements nutrients any component of the food we can take that is carbohydrates proteins minerals okay now what is food when we are talking about food then it is a source of all organic and inorganic elements found in living organism where it comes what are the importance of the food then we can say um, uh, it helps to provide energy all the body components are built up of materials obtained from the food food is also used in building protoplasm for repairment for replacement of the damaged structures hormones and enzymes are also formed from ingredients of food resistance okay that is the defense mechanism of the body and food materials also form reproductive structures now next we will be dealing with the types or the mode of the obtaining nutrients why because all the organism have different modes of nutrition they they perform different modes of nutrition so based on that there are two modes of obtaining nutrients they are one is autotrophic and the other is heterotrophic mode of nutrition heterotrophic mode of nutrition now autotrophic means self feeding why because auto means cell and tropic means feeding whereas hetero means different and again tropic means nutrition or it means feeding so autotrophic means those organism or which follow the autotrophic mode of nutrition and it is a mode of nutrition in which organism are able to build up their own organic food from inorganic raw material with the help of energy whereas the heterotrophic mode of nutrition means it is that mode of nutrition where the organism are not able to synthesize their own food but they depend upon others for their food okay now here we can see that what is a autotrophic mode of nutrition and those organism which make their own food or which now next we will see what is autotrophic mode of nutrition now autotrophic mode of nutrition is that mode of nutrition in which organism synthesizes its own food from simple inorganic material present in the surrounding and those organism which perform this autotrophic mode of nutrition are known as autotrophs now autotrophic can be of two types that it is photosynthetic autotrophs or chemosynthetic autotrophs here photosynthetic autotrophs are those organism which fulfill their carbon and energy requirement using sunlight okay 
example green plants chemosynthetic as the name suggests chemo means chemical synthesis means building up so those organism which utilizes chemical energy instead of light energy to synthesize their organic material they are uh, known as chemosynthetic autotrophs for example we can take that is sulfobacteria now next we will come to heterotopic mode of nutrition now heterotopic mode of nutrition is divided into three main types that is saprophytic parasitic and holozoic heterotopic mode of nutrition is a mode of nutrition in which an organism obtains ready made food from an outside source for both bodybuilding also and for liberation of the energy also okay so there is a difference between the autotrophic mode of nutrition and heterotrophic mode of nutrition in autotrophic mode of nutrition an external source of energy like sunlight is required but in heterotrophic mode of nutrition energy is obtained from the food okay and in autotrophic uh, mode of nutrition the raw materials that is the inorganic raw materials are obtained from the out outside whereas in heterotrophic mode of nutrition they are not required now the organism which obtain their food from outside sources and depend on other for obtaining nutrients are called heterotrophs example lion you can take a lion cat or man now it is of three types here you can see first we will uh, take saprophytic mode of nutrition now saprophytic mode of nutrition or saprotropic mode of nutrition is that mode of nutrition in which food is obtained from organic remains that means it is a mode of obtaining nutrients for organic from organic remains and food articles by performing external digestion okay now what do you mean by this external digestion that means here what does the saprophytes do here digestive enzymes are poured over the food particles which undergo solubilization and that solubilized material are then absorbed and assimilated okay so hence it is known as that saprophytes perform external digestion okay they don't just take away the food but they pour the enzyme and then they break down the complex uh, raw material into the simpler form and then they take that uh, simpler form which is absorbed and assimilated examples are fungi like bread mold yeast and mushrooms next we will be dealing with parasitic mode of nutrition now in parasitic mode of nutrition here a living organism is known as a parasite and this op obtain food from another organism which is known as host okay now the parasite may live over the body okay that means they can live over the host body that is known as ectoparasite that uh, like leeches leech takes lice or uh, plant parasite we can take cascuta okay now next will be endoparasite endoparasite that means they live inside the body of the host both the parasite causing disease in the host are known as the pathogen now ectoparasite and endoparasite there is an example i am giving you an example that is plasmodium plasmodium is a malarial parasite okay and it feeds on the blood of the host body therefore this is known as this is known as endoparasite okay whereas mosquito mosquito are known as ectoparasite because they feed on the blood of the host body that is they feed on the skin and they suck the blood from that surface of the skin plasmodium is a malaria parasite hence it is known as the endoparasite and mosquito is a ectoparasite now next we will be taking holozoic mode of nutrition now holozoic mode of nutrition is that mode of nutrition in which food is ingested by the organism and further the food undergoes the process of digestion absorption assimilation and ejection okay 
Hence, these are known as the holozoic mode of nutrition. It is performed by amoeba or human beings or any of the uh, animals. In holozoic mode of nutrition, it is known as ingestive nutrition. Ingestive nutrition, which means taking off solid food materials okay they are digested inside the body now herbivores feed on the plants carnivores we can say okay they prey upon other animals including herbivores now in the next class we will be dealing with holozoic mode of nutrition okay first we will be dealing with the amoeba and uh, human beings and next we will be dealing with the photosynthesis that is the autotopic mode of nutrition mode of nutrition taken by the green plants so that's all for today thank you class